So in this video, we're going to have a look at, at plotting multiple plots, okay, on the, uh, either on the same axis or uh, using some different uh, different windows, um, mini plots, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, let's have a look. Um, there's a there's a few ways you can plot multiple plots. Okay, one way is to just uh, uh, when it, with the plot command is to actually add a second set of data in. So for example, with this uh, plotting script I had before, um, we can uh, let's make a second y. We've got y one. And y2 say okay and if I make y2 to be a different graph uh, let's go for x uh, squared you know um, minus 3 say for example okay and then in, in the plot command I can say plot x y1 and then I can just write x y2 and MATLAB's clever enough to be able to plot both of those things okay and can actually set um, those uh, uh, to be different colors so we can tell the difference so instead of a parabola I'll call this some parabolas, okay, and I'm, instead of just instead of actually defining what y is, I'm just going to say x and y, and I'm going to take out the axis command um, because I don't need that. So I'm just going to comment that line out with my percentage sign. So if I run that command now, okay, we should get a new plot, and you can see that there's two parabolas, one is red and one is blue, okay, and then you can see that um, you know it's plotted them both at the same time. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to use what's known as the hold command. Okay, so if I take this data out, okay, so we plot, we made a plot. Okay, it comes up with a window with a plot in. We turn the grid on. We've labelled it. Okay, now if you were to type in here, hold on, okay, that holds the graph. And then if we plot x and y two, okay, it'll then plot another load of data for y two. So if we plot this again, we should get the same graph. There we are. So again, it's noticed that we've got the same, we've got two different sets of data, so it's labeled them differently. But uh, but if we didn't have hold on, if we did, took this line out, so again, I'll comment that line out, okay, and you and you run the command, what it, do, what it will do is it will plot X and Y1, okay, turn the grid on, label them, and then because hold is not on, it'll actually just then replace the graph with X and Y2. So if I run this, there'll be one line, okay, which will be Y2 data. So what it's done is it, it did this plot, turned the grid on, labelled it, and then it, um, because hold wasn't on, it didn't save any of that, and it's done a new plot of X and Y2, you see, so it's actually got rid of that window, okay? Um, so hold is quite a useful way of, of plotting lots of data. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're gonna, um, uh, run an example in, um, in the notes where we're going to plot three sinusoids between 0 and and 2 pi using the same axis okay now um, we could uh, create a script file um, uh, for this um, or I'm what I'm going to do is actually probably just load up a, a script file and I've saved these uh, these commands in sine waves so if I double click on that uh, file we've got this uh, is, is the edit window let's uh, minimize this down so I can just talk you through it essentially okay so I made this script a little while ago back in 2012 okay and I've set it up so sine waves m script a, a plot a bunch of sine waves written by me um, and I got my variable dictionary I've got t is my independent variable so that's a that's the time and then I've got my dependent variables which I've called y1 y2 and y3 so we can read this script so I've cleared the um uh, the variable space all the variables from the workspace I've cleared the command window and this close all closes all previous figure windows because that's quite useful uh, if you're doing lots of different plotting and you want to try and sort of uh, uh, yeah, modify the plots each time. So I've defined my time between 0 and 2 pi, uh, which is my time range of time. Okay, so between 0 and 2 pi seconds in a sense. And I've got my different y things down here. I've got y1 is sine of t, y2 is sine of t minus pi by 2, okay, and then y y3 is sine of t minus pi okay so and then I've, down here I've got my plotting information so I've got plot t y1 okay and I'm going to make that a, a dash dot line in red with uh, stars as the as the, uh, the data point okay I've got my hold command in there as I mentioned then I plot t y2 as a dash line in magenta with zero with a, a circular data points and then I've got my plot t Y3, so there's my third one, so there's a dotted line um, with uh, black squares as my as my uh, data points. Or blue squares, sorry. B is blue, K is black. 
Okay. Then I've got down here, I've got some uh, information about my uh, um, uh, labels. Okay, so I've labeled T. I've got a legend in here as well. Okay, so uh, showing the different lines. And that's the end of my uh, script. Okay, so I'm going to run the script and we can see what happens. Okay, so there we go. So I've not actually got a grid on in this one. I've just uh, just um, produced the commands. But you can see that you know, we've set a suitable range for t. So in line 15, if we go here, we define our t between 0 and 2 pi, which is about 6.28. Okay. Um, and then we've got uh, 18 to 20 um, down here. So these are commands to define um, our vectors for y1, y2, and y3. Okay. And then we've got plotting the first set of data in line 23. We then turn the hold on, and then we plot the other two sets of data in the different styles. So you can see we've got our three lines here. We've got our label for y, for, for the x-axis as t. Okay, I've not labeled the y-axis because, in a sense, the legend does that. We can see that this line, the dash dot line with the star, is sign t, and that's defined as the first item in the legend. Okay, we've got then sign t, t minus pi over two which is uh, this command of the legend, and this one, sine of t minus pi, is the, is the third line of the legend. Okay, And that gives us a legend window. Now, clearly, we could add, you know, if we went back to the command window, we could do various things to modify the graph. If I did turn, want the grid on, I could just type grid on. OK, and go back to the graph. Now the grid is on. But you can see that that's, uh, that's what it does. And again, you know, this is a script, so we can, if we wanted to make a quick change, like let's, let's say we actually wanted to plot the cosine of these things, we could just modify that those lines in the, in the script. OK, we don't have to re-enter any commands. We've run the script again, and we get, and then get the lines for cosines. Yeah, so it's a very you know, a great advantage of, of writing scripts comes when you make those modifications. So like I said, we've got this down here, we've got this legend command, okay, you can see that we've got legend sine t, sine t minus pi by 2, and sine t minus pi, okay, and that's how you basically write a legend. The arguments for the legend command are the names in quotes of the uh, various data lines that you want to give names to, okay, and if you want to obviously look at um, how to learn what, what that is, you could write doc legend, and obviously it will show you the help files for the legend and showing you the various ways you can do it because there's all sorts of things you can do change the location to be a different somewhere else on the graph you could change the orientation of the legend and that sort of stuff so you can do all sorts of things like that